today. Knock down shots. You don't see pressure when you make the shot. Just about set to go here in the Joel Duke. Already off to their best start to a season since 2013-14. And the ship is manned by a absolute basketball genius, Carol Lawson, in her third season here. Coach in the Blue Devils. Tip set. And it's controlled by the home side. Here comes Kaya Harrison for Wake Forest. And as you would expect, Duke starts off in man-to-man. -man. Here's Jewel Spear. Wake's leading scorer this year. Olivia Sumiel. There's that tough Duke defense that everybody talks about. Sumiel thought about it. Seven on the shot clock for Demira Hines. Kai Harrison, four, now three. She's got to put it up. Kai Harrison into the lane, and how about that defense to start for the Blue Devils? One thing you noticed earlier is the matchups. Taylor guarding Spear. Taylor, a very good athlete, very solid defender. Wake Forest has to be conscious of who's guarding who and how to move the basketball. You're seeing the starting five for the Blue Devils. Celeste Taylor, who has the ball right now, just passed it off, and it's a turnover, actually. Celeste Taylor leading the Blue Devils in scoring. Elizabeth Balagoon, as Kara Lawson said, plays the four position, but she can also play guard. She's versatile. She's coming off Basketball Writers Association Player of the Week award after putting up 18 points a game, last two Duke wins. And for the Deeks, the usual suspects. Jewel Spear, of course, the junior from the Colony, Texas, leading the way in terms of scoring. Kai Harrison, top of the key. Spear now Sumiel trying to feed it down low and three straight turnovers to start this game for both squads. A little bit sloppy to start out. Well, not necessarily. It could be good defense. That too. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Again, if you're Duke, you just play your game. If you're Wake Forest, you've got a couple of chances to look at the basket, and, and, and you cannot be tentative with passes. There's another turnover. That might be sloppy. <laughs> okay. Could be suffocating defense, too, though, like you said. That's well, for Duke, you cannot any opportunity to go inside, and they score a lot of their points in transition in the paint as well as post up. I mean, you're going to be impressed by Kennedy Brown. Goes about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, can catch the basketball, has a little solid mid-range game. But somebody don't forget about it, and she's kind of taking a different role this year for Duke, is Cheyenne Day Wilson. We talked about the outstanding players in the conference. She is one of the young guns. That's how you break the press. Jewel Spear into the lane, breaking the seal for both teams. It's really important to get Jewel Spear off to a good start, and especially moving and moving without the basketball. Celeste Taylor. Top of the key. Day Wilson, they're looking to feed it down low to Balagoon. Can't get it there. Cheyenne Day Wilson into the lane. Runs out of real estate. And there is Kennedy Brown. Can't finish, though. Harrison, touchdown pass, looking for Williams. And good defense by Duke, but it'll stay here. You're about to see Coach Carol Lawson. There she is, third season in charge of the Deeks, and, or in charge of the Blue Devils, rather. And she's just an immaculate basketball mind. She sees things on the floor that you can only see if you've been around the game for decades. Here's Sumiel, top of the key. Spear trying to work it around. Down low for Hines. Demira Hines trying to get it over the 6'6". Kennedy Brown can't do it. Rebound Balagoon. The opportunity's in the paint. Hines has got to be able to finish. Here's Cheyenne Day Wilson. Guarded by Spear, top of the key. She's going to pop a triple. A little bit short. Rebound Sumiel. And there's that full court press of Duke. It's their calling card on defense, like Coach Lawson said. It's going to be tough for Wake Forest to match up for the rest of the, uh, what do we got, 37 minutes left? If my math is correct. Hines looking to feed it down low somewhere. Wake Forest is moving without the ball, but tough to break through. There's Elise Williams. Got it with the foul and one. There's the sophomore from Raleigh. Getting ball movement and getting Hines and Williams. Nice post up. They're on the backside. Just making a nice pass, and that's what you've got to do. Ray Richardson getting to start. Tweaked her ankle the other day against Louisville. Wasn't really sure how much action she would see. But a nice job of sealing off that time by Elise Williams. And a nice post pass. And get a finish. Good. A nice start, even though a couple of turnovers. A good start for Wake Forest. 
try and complete the three-point play. Williams second on the team in scoring last year behind Jules Spear. And it's a quick 5-0 lead for the Deeks, three minutes in. Wake Forest trying to suffocate on the defensive end, and they get the steal. Here comes Williams. She's going to slow it up. Pop a three. A little bit short. Reagan Richardson pulls it down. Here comes Duke in transition. Taylor, that's her spot. Can't make him pay, though. And Scruggs came in for the rebound, but stepped out of bounds. Going to stay here. Yeah, quick early substitution with Spear out of the basketball game. There's Megan Jebbia, first-year head coach here at Wake Forest. A stacked resume, though. Nine seasons at AU over in D.C., as you can see. All-time leader over there. Let's see, you got a bit of a discussion here between the officials. Hmm. Shot clock. Try to reset the clock. 30 seconds. Yep, Wait, giving him a full 30. Yep. Here's Reagan Richardson. Cheyenne Day Wilson. Back to Richardson. Transfer from Georgia. All the way to the rack. Can't get it. Foul call, though. She'll go to the line for two. Like you said, quick sub for the Deeks, getting Scruggs some early action here, Stan. And after these free throws, it'd be interesting to see, one, if Duke decides to extend their defense, and secondly, if they do, how's Wake Forest handle that? With, with Spear out of the basketball game, what other players are going to handle it? You get a great look at Reagan Richardson, solid athlete, played at the Cannon School over in Concord, Charlotte area, can run the floor, and, and can be that defensive stopper if need be. Just hand the pass and went there. And forced a turnover. Look at that. Yeah. Speak of the devil. No, blue devil. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> That's a layup. I gave you a layup. No. <laughs> Full 30 again. For Duke, chance to tie. Taylor, another turnover. Hard Just an pass. Air pass. Yep. Hard pass to, to, to make and a harder pass to catch. Reagan Richardson, as you saw her uh, little bio there on the screen, one of, I believe, six, six McDonald's All-Americans on this Blue Devil squad. Impeccable recruiting they got. Hines swarmed, needs to get it out. Here comes Kai Harrison over the timeline. There's your list of all Americans. It is six. And that's why Duke is the best defensive team in the ACC. All that talent. Harrison, 10 on the shot clock. Ooh, miscommunication there with Williams. Scruggs picks it up. Scruggs into the lane, forces it up. Can't get it, though. A lot of contact. Taylor in transition. Trying to find it down. Kennedy Brown and Hines reached around. Drew Hines and Sumiel cannot pick up cheap fouls. Twenty-three on the shot clock for the Blue Devils. Going to reset at the logo. Cheyenne Day Wilson, sophomore from Toronto. Taylor, the quarterback of this Duke team. Down low, there's Richardson, leaves it short. Brown cleans it up, but can't finish. Second missed opportunity by Brown. Duke not being patient, finishing plays. Wake Forest, good defense, making Duke, taking them out of the run game. You can see Wake Forest constantly trying to feed it down low. As they're doing now, Scruggs has it, cross-court Sumiel. Wake Forest averages about 63 points a ball game. Nice little back cut there. Yeah, it's Harrison who can't finish, and... Balagoon has the board. Duke looking to push with Taylor. Day Wilson. Corner three for Richardson. Connects. Nice Tie ball time. game. Nice penetration that time. And Richardson. And Taylor got a little, little bit overzealous. We're going to step away here from the Joel. Tie game in Winston-Salem, five apiece. Reagan Richardson getting in on the action from deep. Tie ball game here in Winston-Salem. You're seeing Jewel Spears bio. Leader of this Wake Forest team, the junior from Texas, leading the team in points and minutes. She has scored 
a lot of points in a short period of time in her career. And, you know, just just being being who she is and, and the dynamic person. And Jewel's not on her game today. Other Demon Deacon players have to step up. I was just mentioning before we went to break that the Deeks are averaging about 63 points a ball game. That's how they've got to be able to score some of those points tonight. Good press break. Scruggs got fouled on the way up. She's going to go to the line. Alex Scruggs, who's, who's kind of changed her game over the last season or two. Last year, you saw her more as a as a 3-4. Now this year, more of a 4-3, you know, being able to go inside the lefty. But tonight, if she's having to play more minutes, she's got to be able to do that one thing right there, knock down some free throws. Gets the first. Scruggs, the senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, putting up a hair under six points a game. Can't make them both. Jordan Oliver in the game for Duke. She's got the ball at the logo. Jordan Oliver, really good athlete, moves well without the basketball, can make the mid shot, and a really aggressive defender. Vanessa De Jesus. And there's Oliver, pops a mid range. Loose ball foul, I believe, on Duke. Yep, going Wake Forest White. Kennedy Brown checking back in for Mia Hyde, who got a couple seconds of action there. Wake trying to break the press again. Easier said than done. Nia Becker gets it ahead. Williams straight to the rack, puts it up a little strong. Gets the ball back, though. Second chance opportunity for Wake. They're going to reset. Williams guarded by Brown. Samiel, short shot, short. Rebound Balagoon. Here comes to Jesus. Vanessa De Jesus tangled up with Scruggs. Great defense by Alex Scruggs, but stays here. De Jesus, she'll pop a three from the corner. Harrison pulls it down. Wake bench erupts at that up ahead for Nia Becker. She walked. Well, Becker thought on that scramble that the Deeks had it, so she was already over half court. Then they got a shot, and they throw it ahead, just not able to finish. And, and if if Spear is, is a little slow right now, people like a Becker has got to step up and make plays. An easy opportunity and yet another turnover for Wake Forest. One-point game, Deeks on top. Oliver to Jesus. Down low, that's Corsdale can't hit. Wake Forest continue to do a nice job in their inside 15 foot defense. Ty Corsdale, the graduate from Bothell, Washington, missing that shot for the Blue Devils. Scruggs and a foul called. I wonder who this is going to go against. They're going to tell us right now. If you're Wake Forest, this is a place where they have struggled this year at the free throw line. 15th best in the ACC, shooting only about 64%. They have to be able to knock free throws down for two reasons. One, you score with the the clock stop, but secondly, if they are making free throws, then that establishes them to set their defense up. So that's a good job by Becker now. See, now you can extend your D just a little bit, a little one, two, one, one pressure. They may trap out of that, but you don't want to go to sleep on the wing with Taylor. Taylor in the left corner, right in front of the Wake Forest bench. Oliver and Jesus playing a two woman game. Wake is doing a really good job. Good deflection there. Wake's doing a really good job of not allowing Duke to start their offense inside of the free throw line extension. Taylor popping a 15-footer. Hands it. Yeah, she's good. She is really good to transfer from Texas. Can score off the bounce and also a very good catch-and-shoot player. Here's Scruggs. 
Becker thought about it. Naya Becker and Sumio will pop and hit Olivia nice. Sumio. Really nice. Sumio has really developed that little mid-range shot with a lot of confidence. And tonight, that was a nice penetration by Becker and Sumio, hands ready to score. Here's Oliver, looking for some breathing room. Taylor from the corner, off the backboard. So let's Taylor practice that shot from the corner about 100 times during warm-ups. Probably wanted that one back. Decker into the lane. Williams in the corner. Falls flat. Three-point lead for the Deeks down low. That's Corsdale. Can't finish. Oh, bit of a tie-up. Jump ball, possession arrow. One of the reasons Wake is having some success, great floor spacing, penetration that time by Becker, and that little 15-foot jump shot for Ethan Lonnie extended. Olivia Sumio doing probably better than anybody in the ACC and being able to catch and make that shot. Wake Forest is going to have to have a lot of that. And a nice job of penetrating and recognizing the defense by Becker. Full shot clock for Duke. Brown, awkward shot. Rebound to Jesus, second opportunity. Down to Brown again. This time she finishes. Nice move that time by Brown and a good job by Sumio once she got inside position not to, to reach over and foul her. One thing you're noticing about Wake Forest and their press breaker, instead of Williams doing it, they're letting Williams go down the floor. So that takes a little bit of the size of the trap from Duke, and they're letting Kia Harrison do a good job of bringing it down. Naya Becker, a little strong on her three. Rebound, four is in. 30 seconds to go in the first frame here in Winston-Salem. Deeks cradling a one-point lead. Low-scoring game, a lot of turnovers thus far. Well, low-scoring game favors Wake Forest, provided the fact that Duke's not scoring either. Duke only allows about 11 points of ball game in the first quarter alone. Shot clock turned off. Duke can hold. Ashland Jackson, mid-range, a little strong. Rebound Wake Forest, and that'll do it for the first. One-point lead thus far. Wake Forest treading water against the best defensive team in the ACC. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this on the ACC Network. Position basket so far for Duke. That's a plus for them. And they're handling the basketball fairly well. Off-ball action. Scruggs looking for a dance partner. Ten on the shot clock. Spear. There's Alyssa Andrews for three. She hits. Great recognition. The double team comes. Spear gives it up. Andrews, a willing shooter on the wing, where she can knock down some shots. Great catch and good look. Andrews shooting only 23% from long range this year, connected on her first shot of the game. This will be another turnover for Duke. That's seven. I think that's going to be on Oliver. And watch this again. You see, she's the double team. And the moment she does that, you see Andrew flare to the wing, caught him in rhythm, ready to knock down yet another jumper. I think if you look at the potential of basketball players, I really like the upside of a sophomore from Virginia. Duke laying off their press a little bit. Early stage of second quarter. Wake with a four point lead. Constantly trying to feed it down low. It's harder, harder than it looks, especially when Kennedy Brown's in the lane. 6'6". Six, six. Oh, I'm going to play dumb now. Why? I'm going to be dumb. Why, why is it hard? It makes it harder when there's a taller player, right? Long, longer reach, tougher to get in the passing lanes? No. <laughs> Not necessarily. I mean, you'd like to, hey, you move her. If, you, if she's being posted, you make her move from side to side, make her play deep. You know, you has got to make good passing angles. I mean, it'd be the same thing if it was a bigger person. I get what you're saying, but it If Wake's got some big people, too. See, now she's away from the basket. Down low, it's Hines. Could uh, catch it. Got to move her around, and that's that's the main point. You got to give her different angles. Look, you just can't go in there and say, okay, I'm going to throw it to you. Harrison can't post her up. Hines could. Didn't make the play. 
what Horn said for Duke. They'll try to dive down, look for the weak side. You got Taylor on the wing, so you got to be careful if you double team. As you dive, Brown down low. Double team, foul call. Travel. Oh, it is travel. Couldn't tell at first. So good, def good interior defense there by Wake Forest. Harrison has another turn. Oh, nope. Took a deflection. Stays with Wake Forest. Wake Forest averaged about 15 turnovers a ball game. So not sure exactly what the number is right at this moment. But the good news about the turnover so far for them. Oh, you speak about it. There it is. 15. Right on the number. 14-9. The good thing about the turnover so far for Wake Forest, if there is such a thing, is that they're not transition turnovers. In other words, they're not stealing the ball due to getting the basket out of it. Wake breaks the press. Illegal. Charge. Both teams a little bit frustrated. That's going to be on Hines. I think they threw a leg out on that screen action. Take a look at this. Watch the elbow. Watch the screen. Watch Hines. See, see how she led with the left leg and also the arm. So you got her actually two different ways. Double trouble. Still four-point lead for Wake. Eight minutes and change in the second frame. Taylor back into the game for the Blue Devils. She has the ball. Sunil doing a nice job of playing defense against Brown. Side fronted sometimes they play behind. Corner, that's Ashlyn Jackson. In and out on the three. Yes, good job. Remember what we just said, she did a good job side fronted defensively when the ball was reversed and she was in great position to box out. Williams straight into the lane and got it. Pretty Boom. move. Nice job. So Elise Williams is stepping up to the challenge. She knew she was going to be under a lot of pressure. She had to take the ball inside strong. She's playing that 2-3 spot. Down low, that's Corsdale. Pretty layup, nice. The one thing about this Duke basketball team, they've got a lot of size in some spots and definitely depth. Corsdale, the transfer. Corsdale coming over from Oregon State. Big serious minutes here for Kara Lawson. And she comes up with the ball and draws a foul, I believe. Good defense there by Corey Taylor, a graduate student. That's two fouls on Scruggs, and she'll head to the bench. Balagoon back into the game for the Blue Devils. Player of the week, as we mentioned. 18 points a game in Duke's last two wins. Day Wilson, going to pop a mid-range. She got clobbered, and she'll go to the line. A few times we've seen Day Wilson just try to take it on herself and go one-on-one go -on -one and, and try to make a basket. The first player is just Elizabeth Williams about 10 years ago to be the ACC Rookie of the Year. And she can score a lot of ways, but a lot of the pressure of having to score has taken off her because of the development of Balagoon and the continued, you know, the continued mid-range and long-range shooting of Taylor. But you can look at Cheyenne Day-Wilson. I mean, does a lot of things and does a lot of things well. The only game that they lost this year, Duke, was up in Oregon against UConn. But she can put it up very quickly, and it'd be interesting to see how she tries to, if so, take on this game. Now, you got to run the baseline. You cannot stand stationary after a made basket against this team and throw it in. And here Wayne pushes it. Williams to the rack. Can't finish. Foul call. Late whistle. Colonel Lawson not too happy about that. That's Brown, first one. You get the ball in play. You throw over the zone. Nice job there. Remember, they're not using Williams early on. She goes inside. You know, maybe got her with the body. Probably would have let that go. But a good job of being aggressive if you're Elizabeth Wills Williams. To take it right at her. Make her block it. Or you score or both. Williams looking to extend Wake Forest lead. Leading the Deeks in assists, turnovers, and steals this season. There's a little bit of everything. Second on the team in scoring last year. Led the team in assists, though. And it's a four-point game. 6.47 remaining in the half. Wake shows a 
Buffalo took the pressure themselves. Double team on Taylor. Good break. Dave Wilson trying to calm things down at the logo. Shakira Lawson was a little upset right there when they broke the pressure. We wanted them to attack a little bit more. And they're wake, they're playing backwards. As long as you're playing half court defense, a half court game, this favors Wake Forest right now. Three on the shot clock. Taylor finishes with the left. Yeah, nice play by Taylor. We talked about, you know, Balagoon being a big time scorer. Taylor leads his team with 12 a game, but can score so many different ways. Just put her head down, put it on the floor, and is able to get the basket. Williams, screen from Sumiel. Ooh, a collision. Looks like Sumiel took one to the face. She jerked her head back after that collision. Maybe the neck. They're going to take a look at this to see if this might be a flag one. We're going to have the verdict for you when we come back. Wake Forest up two on the ACC's best team. Back in a few here in the ACC Network. ¿Crees que la sabiduría es un... Two-point game at the Joel. We took a break to go over a foul call, and Cheyenne Day Wilson was the subject of it. Yeah, watch, watch, watch right there. See when Wilson tries to step through the screen of Sumiel. This is a better look right here. Great job. You can clearly see. And we were discussing it a moment ago about F1 in men's basketball, but it's not. And that's making a legitimate play to the ball. It's an intentional foul in the ladies' game. Same play, it's gonna be a penalty, but just different different terminology. Jewel Spear connects on the free throw. Good. Give me another one. <clears throat> but that was kind of an easy call. Dave Wilson took a seat on the bench after that one. Spear connects on one of two, but it'll be Wake Forest ball. Sometimes a play like that wakes a team up. Carol also not very happy about the foul by Dave Wilson, gets her out. And maybe this kind of turns up the juice defensively for Duke. If you're awake, you've got to be able to adjust it. It's a new set for them. Williams. In and out of the lane. Becker. So hard to feed it down low. Ashley Jackson. A nice job to freshman on Williams. Six on the shot clock. Spears got to do something. Cross court. Andrew's going to pop another triple. Hit another triple. That's two on the night for Alyssa Andrew. Yeah, that's her area. She loves that right wing, three point area, corner, clock winding down. You're thinking drive. Good job by Jewel Spear to recognize who was open. Largest lead of the game for Wake at six. Jackson thought about a three. Taylor on the near side. Jackson going to take it into the lane, put it up, in and out. Rebound, Andrews. She'll take it herself. And a smart decision. She wanted to pick the dribble up. She does that. They're going to be trapped. That's, that's a smart play by the sophomore. Again, plenty of time on the clock. Becker into the lane. Tried to go up with the left. Good defense by Balagoon, but it'll stay here. 11 on the shot clock. Again, clock winding down. You see the screen. They jump out. Makes the flip over to the other side. And again, good job contesting the shot by Duke, but a better shot by the sophomore, Alyssa Andrew. Here's Sumiel with six on the shot clock. Wake Forest bunched up here in the corner. Williams going to have to put it up for mid-range. This time it won't go. Vanessa De Jesus to the Blue Devils. Celeste Taylor going to pop a three and knock it down. There is Celeste Taylor. We were waiting for her. Yeah, that's the thing that you do not want to see happen. In transition, that little flip back, it gives Taylor a chance to get her feet set, her eyes on the rim, and she is a deadly three-point shooter. Her 20th and 21st threes of the season. Taylor leading. Blue Devils in scoring. Down low, great pass. Williams can't finish, though. Good feed from Becker. This is that run that you don't want Duke to get on if you're a Wake Forest fan. If you're Duke fans, you want to see a score here. Shot is short from Balagoon. Wake will take it the other way. 3.40 to go, first half. Wake Forest up by three. Wake's done a nice job of basically setting the tempo. Not being in the big hurry. They have turned the ball over. They've got back on defense. Duke's early pressure hasn't really bothered him that much. Sumiel, she's short on her shot. Kennedy Brown was there. 
in her face. Taylor can't give her that much room, and she makes him pay. Yeah, they got mixed up on the switch right there, and Taylor makes you pay. Does, does not take her a long time to catch the ball, turn, and shoot. Got her feet set on the, toe, on the line, and buries yet another three. Megan Jebbia wants time. After Duke comes back to tie the game, that's Celeste Taylor, the senior from Valley Stream, New York. As I mentioned, leading Duke in scoring and minutes played. McDonald's All-American in high school, transferred from Texas before last season where she was all Big 12 freshman team. Also led Duke in steals last year. Nice job there getting caught on the screens. Not got to know where she is at all times. You can't give her space. Watch how quickly catch the ball. Elise Williams about a step and a half too slow getting there. And if you wait, you're late. And if you're late, she's going to knock down threes. Taylor's got 10 of Duke's 21 tonight. More three-pointers herself than the whole rest of the team. This is a Duke basketball team that doesn't make a lot of threes. They've only had five games when they've had seven or more. So they, they go inside and score and take the time to freeze. Here's the run. Good defense by Mia Hyde on one end. And there's an attempted finish by Jordan Oliver, who draws a foul. Redshirt Jr. from Prosper, Texas. And as you watch this basketball game, you know, even though Duke's not getting all the steals, last couple of times they've had runouts, but they're putting some pressure, making Wake think, slowing Wake down. Wake makes the mistake. Duke trying to pick the tempo up. Transition basketball opportunities. <laughs> Oliver hits one two. Good rebound by Balagoon. Put it up and in. Caught him sleeping. We talked about Balagoon being strong inside, just kind of wedged Becker out, went over, got the rebound, able to get a score. So that was a three-point play the old-fashioned way for Duke, and Duke's able to take the lead. Yeah, and a flash from six points down to three points up. It's all Duke last couple of minutes. See, man, that pressure's getting to him. They're cutting off that wing pass once you get over half court. Right now, if you're Megan Jeffy, you're trying to find a way to nurse this thing into halftime. Nothing run for the Blue Devils. Here's Oliver. Down low. Balagoon. Got it with a foul and one. She got Becker jumping. Great action. Watch outside and you repost and just go pick and roll. And again, you've got to guard the screen. You've got to guard the switch. And you've got to get him passing lanes. Big going downhill. Nice pass and a better finish. She got her last five games. No wonder she was the uh, U.S. Basketball Writers Association Player of the Week. Two wins over big ACC opponents, NC State and Louisville. Here comes Kaya Harrison. Tried to finish the reverse. Couldn't do it. Not the shot Wake needed at that time. Good idea, but a better shot needs to be taken. Another triple from Celeste Taylor on fire from deep in the second quarter. And you knew it was going to happen. You just didn't know when. Wake has had a couple of self-inflicted wounds. Duke has taken advantage of it to give the extended lead to Wake. Wake Forest needs a basket. Sumiel thought about answering. Down low, and that looked like it was blocked by Taylor. Sumiel, another shot. This time she puts it in. It's a tough for basketball players you'll find anywhere in the country. Olivia Sumiel. Taylor, the bell cow of this Duke offense. Turnover, though. Aaron Pass looking for Balagoon down low. Touchdown pass. Becker, oh, mishandled. That's a killer. Megan Jebby is not liking that. Wow, it's a good look. A great look. Six-point lead for Duke. Minute and change remaining in the first half. No rush. This was a 10-9 game after the first quarter, but offense has woken up a bit here in the second. Here's Vanessa De Jesus. Floater won't go. Rebound back to her. Taylor. Oh, she thought about another one. Got him slipping. Mia Hyde down low. She can't hit her lane. It's Mia Hyde, the graduate student from Austin, Texas. Grad transfer from Tulane on the miss.
50 seconds to go. Williams has it. Andrews guarded by De Jesus. Another turnover. Another steal for Duke. They make it so tough to get it down low. About an eight second difference. Game clock and shot clock. Jordan Oliver leading the team in assists and an immaculate 3.2 assist to turnover ratio right now at the logo. Seven on the shot clock for Balagoon. Starting their offense about seven seconds on the clock. Balagoon can't connect to three. Rebound, and it'll go, foul will go against Mia High. Nice job of blocking it out, getting inside position with CDL. Go to the free throw line. Again, you, you got to get some easy baskets, bleed this thing into a half, and then just kind of go back to what gave you some success earlier if you're Duke. I mean, if you're Wake Forest, which is just, hey, now your ball makes some shots, play good defense. It got a little slack for a couple moments, and it did. Wake Forest did, and Duke took advantage of it. That's Stan Luter. I'm Bijan Todd. And this is Duke against Wake Forest, ACC matchup with 19th-ranked Blue Devils. Beast has been awoken in the second quarter as they're up six. Sumiel, got here free throws. As hard as Sumiel plays, we're just saying she's, she's only taken like six free throws all season long. He doesn't get to the free throw line a lot. She missed both. Lane violation, I think. If this comes down to a battle of the free throws, Duke will take that all day. Best free throw shooting team in the ACC. Yeah, that's what we said earlier. I mean, a number, you know, Wake Forest is 15th in the conference, and, and Duke is number one, as you mentioned, and, and you got to make free throws. In a game like this for Wake Forest, every easy basket, you've got to take advantage of. Sumiel connects on the third of the two. Duke's got 10 seconds. Here's to Jesus, pushing the pace. Balagoon mishandled. Three seconds now, two. Taylor, step back three at the buzzer. Celeste Taylor, do you believe it? Strut wow. your stuff. And it's an eight-point lead in a flash for the Blue Devils heading into the half. You thought when that got missing. And for Wake Forest to come back in this basketball game, they've got to do a better job of taking Celeste Taylor out of the ball game. How about that? How about that 17-3 run in the last five minutes and change as well in that first half? Here is Taylor for the Blue Devils. Kennedy Brown into the lane. Left hand blocked. How about Demira Hins starting off with a good defensive effort in the second half? Well, we got to have some defensive action out of Hines. You go inside to Brown. Brown a little slow getting that ball up, brought it down, and Hines reaches over. Nice defensive play, but still a lot of time on the clock. Celeste Taylor can't hit. Rebound, Hines. The one thing you have to do if you wake for us is you have to be a team rebounder. One player is not going to be able to crash the glass against this Duke team. They've got length. They've got athleticism. That was a nice defensive possession for them. Wake Forest looking to claw back from eight down. Here's Kai Harrison. Williams catch and shoot top of the key. Knock it down. Reese Williams, that's a nice look. And a good start possession-wise if you're Wake Forest. I mean, they come out of the half, you get a defensive play, then you get a Williams three. Got to get more points out of Williams as we're not seeing a lot. Joe Spears got to get active as well on the offensive end. Williams in double figures. There's her 10th point on the night with that triple. Foul on Wake Forest against Sumio. This trip down, you've got Williams guarding Taylor. So she can't get caught on the swept too late. Wide open. Taylor in and out. That's unusual, judging by how hot she was in that second quarter. She got caught on the switch that time. Taylor goes inside to bounce to the outside, was set up with a screen, just not able to knock it down. And Taylor left all alone. Here's Jewel Spear into the lane, up with the right, in with the right. You've seen many games this year where Jewel Spear has not really been active scoring in the first half, and all of a sudden the basket sparks her and she goes on her own little 8, 9, 10-point run. It would be timely if she could do that for Wake Forest now. Taylor guard by Williams. Williams pokes it free. Caught by Balagoon. It's like a foul down low. And Tamira Hines doesn't like that call. Here's the layup by Jewel Spear. Nice oh, effort with the right. Watch this, you drive there, splits the defender. And again, we've seen this many times over the course of this season 
where she's been slow early. Think back to a couple weeks ago in Rhode Island, made four points at halftime into the game over 20, getting good looks. Let's see if that's going to spark her. But again, Duke's got to do. I mean, Wake's got to do a good job in the defensive end. Reagan Richardson down low, nice inbound play by the Blue Devils. Yeah. She's been kind of quiet, but you know she's around. Just long, athletic, can make plays. There's a pressure. Yeah, Scruggs into the game after Hines picked up a quick foul. Megan Jebbia tapping into her bench pretty early. Harrison's going to dribble out of this press and get caught. Running out of real estate. And Jebbia needs to call in some reinforcements with a timeout. We're going to step aside. Five-point game in Winston-Salem. Can Wake Forest claw their way back? Let's find out. Announcing the grand opening of the team, their top scorer, their leading minute producer, but kept kind of quiet tonight. So credit to the Duke defense. Yeah, she's she's having to work, but she's used to that so far this year. But look at this. The, you know, she's averaging about 32, 33 minutes a game, only 13 in the first half, has yet to take a three-point basket. So again, it might be partly Duke defense. She could be waiting, we'll see. But Jewel Spear has had a phenomenal career at Wake Forest, and there's some more great moments yet to come for the young lady from Texas. Yeah, that 40% clip from long range, 10th in the nation, but yet to attempt one tonight. Let's see if she tries to catch fire from deep. Here's Kaya Harrison. Seven on the shot clock. Harrison in the corner. Got to move. Here's no Spear. Movement. Spear swarm. Take away. And that's a shot clock violation. Great defense again by the Blue Devils. Well, Wake Forest is helping Duke a little bit now. If you notice on that play, watch this. Watch all the Deeks standing around in the lane as she drives. Not clearing out, but she's got to be moving, especially against this Duke basketball team because they come at you in waves. Good defensive possession by Duke. Now will they capitalize and put more and more pressure on Wake Forest? That was Elizabeth Balagoon with a hand on that ball as Scruggs gets it back for Wake. Intercepted in the lane. Spear pushing the pace. No advantage. Spear, there's her first triple attempt, and there is what Megan Jebbia has been looking for. Great job that time reading it. Numbers weren't in her favor, kind of let the defense thin out, had Brown. Wasn't sure how far Brown was going to come out and contest. Measured it up, knocked down to three. And he cuts the lead to two. Kennedy Brown on the elbow. Reagan Richardson with a body charge. Look at that. Great job by Harrison. Matt Harrison pumped up after that one. Wake Forest with a chance to tie or take the lead this next time down. Check out this positioning. Now you got to stop. See if they can build off it. How do you try to score off of this? Ty Harris playing like a senior should with a sense of urgency. Not putting up big numbers tonight, but giving you some defensive leadership. One of the top players on this team in assists along with steals. Gave up a body, got the play. Now can wait, convert. Yeah, Kai Harrison showing her veteran leadership. Senior from Baldwin, New York. She's got the ball trying to break the press, and she does. Harrison, open woman. It's Williams. Her triple won't go off the heel. Nice rebound by Jordan Oliver in the game. Down low, Kennedy Brown. Spin move, right hand, won't go. Nice job by Scruggs. Had the size disadvantage, did not foul her when she got in the post. Wake Forest again with a chance to draw level. Two-person action right here. Try to get screen and roll, look for the weak side, see if you can get Scruggs. Yeah, it's Elise Williams with an errant pass. Try to force it into Samuel down low. Vanessa De Jesus in the game for the Blue Devils. Stolen again by Williams. A couple consecutive turnovers for Duke. A little bit too far for Spear, but she keeps it in. There's another one turnover after turnover in these early stages. Same thing as in the first half. Jordan Oliver. De Jesus looking to feed it down low, nothing doing. Open in the corner, it's Balagoon. Rims out, Somiel is there. Wake Forest pushing the pace after they get boards. Alex Scruggs in the game 
for Wake. Megan Jebbia guiding the ship with Jewel Spear. Second three attempt for Spear. This time it's too strong. Oliver pulls it down. Two Wake Forest in two possessions. De Jesus, great pass for Balagoon. What a play by Vanessa De Jesus, the junior from Valencia, California. McDonald's All-American. No correction. She is shooting 100% from the free throw line this year, De Jesus is. Williams into the lane, takes it herself, floater off the glass, too strong. Spear, she'll pop a triple. Jewel Spear! Nice job, dead time by Williams, penetrates, gets her rebound, kicks it out, Jewel Spear. Whatever she did in the first half or at halftime, she's waking up there. She's got some good looks and is able to knock down some shots. That cut the lead to one. Take a look at this again and again. What you see out of Jules Spear. You want to know what an all-conference performer looks like? Just look at Jules Spear. Second chance opportunity. Find her on the wing. Knocking down a three. Coming out of the half about how Jules Spear was kept quiet. Well, guess what? She's hit two triples in the last few minutes. Moving into third place in program history in that category. And there are more to come. Oh, yeah. Jules Spear. Tonight, they're going to hope, as they're down by one to the vaunted 19th-ranked Blue Devils. But that woman with the ball is dangerous, Celeste Taylor, putting up 16 in the first half. Taylor driving kick. Mia Hyde going to pop a mid-range. There's Mia Hyde, graduate from Austin, Texas, transfer from Tulane. Scruggs in the game for the Deeks. Duke laying off a bit. Let's see what the matchup is right now. Who's guarding Scruggs? Taylor's going to guard Spear. See if they try to move her a little bit. It's like Corsdale. Sumiel. Sumiel can make the pass or make the cut. Williams with a scoop layup. Another one point game. Nice inside work by the Deeks to Jesus. Take it out. Back down low. Stolen by Harrison. Kaya Harrison jumping in the passing lane. Up ahead, Scruggs. Can she finish? Blocked! What a get back by Celeste Taylor. Back and forth action. Can Taylor do it on both ends of the floor? Ashlyn Jackson, stop and pop. Rebound, hide. Reset. Second chance opportunity. Their half court set. They try to go inside and back out. Well, you can't leave me a hide that wide open. Or go inside and then she keeps it. Around two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Wake Forest keeping it interesting. There's an eight point deficit at the half. They've clawed back. Thanks in part, as we said, to Jewel Spear. Waiting patiently in the corner. Sumiel. There's Spear, catch and shoot again. This time too strong. De Jesus. De Jesus taking the energy to drive, kicks it off. Love the penetration. That's about the third, fourth time that Duke has had point blank shots in the game and not been able to take advantage of it. You saw Wade try to run a little screen action and screen down for Spear. The same set again. Scruggs into the lane, trying to do it herself. Can't finish with the right. Corsdale's there. Scruggs takes it right back, puts it up and in. What a play! Scruggs. She's playing her best basketball in the paint. Smart play, forces a Duke turnover. Love the hustle that time by Scruggs. Yeah, feel the energy in this building. They applaud Alex Scruggs for that effort. Don't fall asleep on her, she'll make you pay. Cuts the lead once again to one. How about this effort? Look at that. Give me that. Put it up and in. Do pressing again. Oh, and Harrison picks up her dribble. That's a turnover. Balagoon. Can't do that. Especially not against Elizabeth Balagoon and company. Got to run the baseline. She's stationary. Yeah, they're forced to burn the timeout. Scruggs didn't want to repeat. Didn't want two consecutive turnovers. 
So Wake's going to talk it over. Excellent hustle plays here. Just watch this. There's the play by Balagoon. And we haven't really talked a lot about Balagoon tonight, but he's always around the basketball. And you watch Scruggs at the replay was going away. She makes the cardinal mistake. You get the ball out of bounds. You can move the baseline. And she stayed stationary, so she became a defender. And she was under the basket, so that becomes a defender as well. Didn't move, had to use a timeout. Wake Forest now with only uh, one timeout remaining in this basketball game. And you yeah. watch it, you know, and you continue. We talked about it at the open about what Duke has done defensively, only allowing about 50 points a game. And one of the reasons they do such a great job defensively is they are very intense. They move their feet. I always watch them. They, they, they move. They're moving. They're always in defensive position. And they move their feet. They use their feet. Not all. <laughs> Talked to Kara Lawson before the game about that defense. She says, hey, it just comes down to talent. I can coach them best I can. I can coach the best scheme in the world, but they know that their first job on this team is to guard on that end of the floor. Yeah, well, she's being <laughs> modest true. because she'll tell them every day, if you don't play D, you're not getting them. Good job beating the pressure. Spear breaks it. Williams taking it herself. Scruggs battling for the rebound. What's the call here? Jump ball. Possession arrow for Wake. saw the opening, thought about Williams pulling that out, but then she saw she had an angle, but you've got to attack. You've got to either make the shot, get fouled, or possibly both. But Wake Forest keeps possession. Keep moving Duke defensively. Duke's not as guys be steals as we even thought that it's a good drive. Spear, baseline, can't get it, gets a foul. That time Duke made a mistake and did not close out on the baseline. Spears recognized it coming around the corner, is able to turn the corner and then goes inside with reverse and gets contact. Good recognition by Jewel. And that's something, again, that's, she has changed her game a little bit or grown. Where last year and definitely her freshman year, she would not have attacked like this. She would have settled for the jump shot or the mid range. Now she understands how to score the basketball in different ways, gets inside and definitely knows how to make free throw shooting about 85%. Yep, leading free throw shooter on this team. And she cans them both. Again, a one-point lead with 66 remaining, 66 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Trap. Cheyenne Day-Wilson, she's been kept relatively quiet today as well. Just two points for the Blue Devils. Best player coming out of Canada, she was out of Toronto. I don't pronounce that second T today. Ashlyn Jackson. Down low, Brown. Nice pump fake, and she finishes. Oh, that's a good screen. That started all the action. They just keep the ball up in the air at 6-6 six, six and finish. And again, after the made basket, Duke extends that defense just a little bit. And you notice after the first pass is made, they're dropping in the passing lanes. Remember when Wake Forest was getting the ball half court? They're not able to do that quite as easy as they once did. Kaya Harrison into the lane, kicks it out. Sumiel mid-range. Rebound, Duke. Spear was lurking. Gotta hurry. 13 seconds. Day Wilson's got time. She'll work a straight. Eight seconds, now seven. Cheyenne Day Wilson looking for some breathing room. Nice pump fake. Day Wilson floater. Short at the buzzer, and that'll do it for 30 minutes. But guess what? The next 10 are important. Three point lead for Duke, but hey. Wake Forest on the precipice of a big upset. Let's see if they can do it. Ten minutes to go. Stay with Spots by the Demon Deacons there in the third frame. Third quarter has been Wake Forest's best quarter this season, averaging about 19 and a half points a ball game. We talked earlier about Duke only allowing 10 points in the first quarter per average and 10 points in the second quarter. But they give up 14 and 15 in the third and fourth. So we'll see how the numbers shake out in this final 10 minutes of play. Duke, 19th ranked team in the nation, trying to avoid a colossal big four upset here. Kennedy Brown doing well to keep that lead intact. Nice inside position once again by Brown, and it's 6'6", definitely has a side, size advantage over Hines at 6'2". Took her time, finished the play. Scruggs. 14 on the shot clock for Kaya Harrison. 
Scruggs again. She's going to pop a triple. Knock it down, Alex Scruggs. Yeah, that's the versatility that we're finally seeing out of Scruggs. We saw her score on a power move a moment ago in a steal, but her ability to step outside and knock down threes can give defenses trouble. Nice look by Scruggs. Here's Celeste Taylor. Boy, she is dangerous. Wide open three for Ashlyn Jackson. Answers with a three of her own. Yeah, the freshman's got a great upside. A lot of people in Durham are very impressed with her, excited about her possible career. Yeah, Ashlyn Jackson, freshman from China. China, Texas, that is. McDonald's All-American in high school she was. Five-point lead for the Blue Devils. Elise Williams into the corner, draws a foul. Looks like that's going to be against Kennedy Brown. Carol Lawson coaching the Blue Devils to their best start to a season since 2013-14, and why not? She's just a basketball genius. And you can tell by the way she coaches these Blue Devils. Best defensive team in the ACC. That's going to be on Brown. Two fouls in the span of, what, five seconds on Kennedy Brown? I wonder if Lawson taps into her bench at some point. Take three. Alyssa Andrews into the game for Megan Jebbian. Williams catch and shoot three. Can't finish. Jackson's there, pushing the pace. Ashley Jackson almost carried. Taylor, drive and shoot. Doesn't hit anything. Oliver couldn't keep it. Williams has it, bit of a struggle. Two on one developing and Andrews is gonna slow it up. Yeah, good decision by Andrew. Help side was coming. Been an easy steal, but now the Wingway Force has got it to do. move the basketball, move people. We'll one two set, spear out of the ball game. Where will the shots come on the perimeter? Eight on the shot clock for Harrison. Looking for a screen, three on the shot clock. Harrison's gonna have to put it up at the buzzer. She can. That was a good defense by Jackson. She turned her, made her work. Harrison, the senior, understand shot clock. One time going down, took her time, got in the lanes, able to score. Wake just not going away. Three-point game. We'll stay here. Clock's winding down. You got to be aware that they switch right there. Good job moving your feet by Jackson. Made it difficult, but Harrison not rushing. Just takes her time, gets in the lane, elevates, scores the basket. Celeste Taylor. 16 points in the first half, zero here in the second for their best player. Balagoon almost walked, but she gets the call. Oh, Megan Jebbia hates that non traveling call. Balagoon's in double figures, as you can see. Harrison runs out of real estate. Get it out of there. Yep, and charge. Looks like it. It's going to go against Scruggs. One of the things you have to understand, especially playing Duke, is when you go on the baseline, you've got to go. So she gets jammed right there. You watch Scruggs trying to clear some space. Nice job defensively by Duke. One of the things they do a really good job is they jam cutters. So if you're trying to cut, they get in your way, kind of block them. It's allowed freedom of movement for you. And that time, Scruggs got caught trying to get too much space. Ty Corsdale into the game along with Jordan Oliver for Carol Lawson's team. Here is Oliver, lost control. Turnover. Good defense by Wake. He run the dribble hand up. He got to tighten that up a little bit. There was too much space here. He got a little weak in the pass and ended up turning it over. Again, with, with Spear you know, struggling right now to score, she's back in the game. Got to keep Scruggs and company alert. They're going to be back in this game. This is a huge possession for Duke. Defensively, can they get a stop and get a score? Wake Forest continue to rub screen. There's a rub. Foul called. If that's against Kennedy Brown again, that's her fourth yeah. and her third this quarter. 
Yep, yeah. and immediately tapping into the bench is Carol Lawson. She's going to put in Mia Heidi. And that's one of the reasons why you would want to get her outside as opposed to attacking her inside because you can, re you can run down here, you can go off the screen. She was behind the entire time, didn't get her balance defensively, creates a foul. So we'll see how long she's going to be out of the game, 6 10. Great pass by Harrison. Hines can't finish. That shot might have been altered. Here comes Celeste Taylor the other way. Six minutes to go in the game. Five-point lead for the visitors. Taylor baseline. That's a long two from Reagan Richardson. That's money. So smooth. So easy. Never in a rush. Richardson. Taylor finds her as she floats the baseline. Richardson catching score. Now, see, this is going to be a spot throwing. So let's see how defensively we have for the timeout. Watch this. Drive inside. Got to stop the basketball. Good help. But you got to rotate over. An extra pass gets to basket by Richardson. Well, it's a close one on our hands. Seven points in favor of Duke. Stay with us. Uh, no. We talked about how suffocating this Duke defense is. You can see second in the nation right now. Wake Forest close to that 50-point mark. Five and a half to go. Here's Jewel Spear trying to cut this seven-point deficit. And if you're Duke, you feel like this is a real opportunity to pull away. And that helps. A steal by Celeste Taylor. Unforced turnover. You're talking about, you know, Duke holding teams under 50 points. They've only given up one 70-point ball game. That was at Lawson versus UConn. They gave up 78. So they have played good defense, but they forced a lot of turnovers. They're doing the same thing tonight. 16th game, forcing over 10. Here's Taylor looking for her first points of the half. Nothing but net from the free throw line. Yeah, she's she's so smooth. She just finds her spot. Got the long arms, just elevates and scores. Taylor's up to 18, wide open, and Hines makes no mistake. Good job there by Wake Forest. Now if you do, just handle, handle the run. Keep the ball in Taylor's hands. Trying to trap her in the corner. Four minutes and change to go. Seven point lead and now it's time and score for Duke. They're content to cradle this shot clock down. Blue Devils working it around. Taylor with six. Oliver with five, she walked. That's a break for Wake Forest, they needed that one. Scruggs come back into the game for Demir Hines. So Kennedy Brown with four fouls back into the contest. We'll see if uh, Megan Jebbia and company try to target down low, draw that fifth foul out of her. Big guns out for both teams. Scruggs gets it across. Tipped out by Balagoon and Scrug. Oh no, Jebbia looks like she called a timeout. It's gonna be a 60 second break. We're gonna keep it right here though. A little bit too hasty Scruggs was to get that across the timeline and Balagoon's got good hands. That's the 18th possible turnover for, for Wake, but that's costly. As you see Balagoon kind of coming up a little slow, but now, if that timeout is going to be taken, I think that's going to be Wake's last timeout. So the plate is final 354 for Wake Forest with no real ability to make a score, get a stop, make a score, stop the clock. It's going to be very difficult for them because we talked about it earlier, Duke being such a good free-throw shooting team. Well, Duke has not lost on the road this season. Wake hasn't lost at home. This is the road ahead for the Blue Devils back at home. On Thursday against Clemson, who just beat Wake Forest, by the way, and a heartbreaker for the Deeks. Then a two-game road stand. A lot of ACC action coming up for the Blue Devils as they try to maintain that first place mark in the ACC. If they win tonight, they're going to move on to 14-0. Or sorry, 14-1, 4-0 in the ACC, I should say. And for the Deeks, much of the same. Another ACC home matchup against Georgia Tech coming up on Sunday. We'll be here for that one, Stan. And a three-game road trip against Notre Dame, Miami, Virginia Tech before they come back home towards the end of the month. 
Interesting note, Duke in their 13 wins this season, they've won their games by an average, an average of over 24 points, 24.7 to be exact. So credit to Wake Forest for keeping this one close, but man, Duke is something else this year. They've got what it takes, let me tell you. Here's Williams, 16 on the shot clock. Tipped away, looking for Spear. Here comes Oliver, and that's a foul. Yep, that one uh, upset the Duke bench, and rightfully so. Just another one of those loose passes. You gotta make ball fakes and shot fakes. You can't make the cross-court pass. And we, we talked about the good athleticism of Jordan Oliver earlier on. Got in that passing lane. Hard foul. They're going to take a quick look at it. But again, after a timeout, especially if that's your last timeout, you can't make that that error. Check your passes. Yeah, Williams with a little bit of a lazy pass across the court, and she uh, got a little upset and took her temper out on Oliver, who was driving to the lane. And we had an intentional foul in the first half, you'll remember. I believe it was Cheyenne Day Wilson who got an elbow up high on Olivia Sumiel. And we'll see if they're going to call Elise Williams for an intentional foul here. common foul so it's going to stay here it's going to be baseline out for the Blue Devils looking to extend the 7 point lead really, it's really not that bad she just put her hand on her back and trying to drive all over to the basket lost her balance so you know that was just a basketball play bad basketball play in, in, as far as how it turned out but now more time on the clock for Duke just continue to run what you're doing Run the clock down, see if you get ISOs for Taylor. Haven't talked a lot about Balagoon as far as an offensive threat. She scored off second chance opportunities. This will be a good chance. Got a rebound. Yeah, Balagoon, here we go. We'll see. Just take your time. Richardson with seven. Richardson spin move in the lane. Right hand. Couldn't finish. Rebound, Balagoon. Second chance points, just like you said. Yeah. Inbound situation there. You got to run the baseline. Balagoon, one of two Blue Devils in double figures, along with, of course, Celeste Taylor, who's got 18. Balagoon's now got 12. Balagoon, a double-double as well. Ten rebounds. Second chance points, like we mentioned. Wake Forest now. This is the time. Ball fakes and shot fakes. There's your screen. Snap back for Sumiel, but you're going to have a shot. Scruggs catches two, three. She got fouled to the line for three. She'll go. Nice bit of offense right there. Try to run it and reverse it to the other side where you've got the shooters. The all eyes are so much on Scruggs, and rightfully so, when she's got the basketball. But again, watch the dribble penetration. Step there, just a step late is, is uh, Balakone. And if she's late, she's late. There you go. And now Scruggs, the only problem is that on the season, Scruggs has struggled from time to time at the free throw line, only shooting about less than 30%. So concentrate and knock these in. There's one. Yep, Scruggs, the senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Now what you've got to do if you're Scruggs, and let's, let's look at this because we talked about this a couple of games ago about her technique. Sometimes she rushes. So take your time, bend, and extend. She's not bouncing the ball as much. That's good. Pretty as you please, calm, cool, and Just, collected. Yep. Same motion. Bend, finish high, follow through. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that. no, you can, but that's okay. I mean, as far as her technique, she just got a little fast coming out. That's okay for that. She, you know, she sits better. Here we go. Here comes Duke and Balagoon and company are going to milk this clock big time with a seven point lead, 2.30 remaining. Remember, Duke has a couple of timeouts remaining. Wake Forest doesn't. Wake is, an out, is deep, but Duke is an outstanding free throw shooting team. Here we go. Celeste Taylor with four, popping an elbow jumper. A little strong. Oh, and that's a great job just getting just getting back to her feet, getting that rebound. Favorable bounce as well. Got to go after the basketball. Killer break for Wake Forest, but hey, credit Duke. Keeping this game, trying to keep this game, I should say, out of reach with a seven-point lead. Oliver, same spot as Taylor. She can't connect. Rebound Williams. Harrison, crossover, into the lane, left hand. Rebound, good box out by Kennedy Brown. Opportunity there. Didn't realize maybe she had as much room as she did. Now if you wake, who do you foul? When do you foul? And might be getting into desperation time here. It's Jordan Oliver has the ball at the logo, dumps it off to Balagoon. Ten on the shot clock. Balagoon guarded by Scruggs. Down low, Brown. 
That's going to be a push off against Wake, and they do not like that call, not one bit. Call it on Summy Hill. Sometimes Duke tries a little quick hitter for Taylor. Let's see if they try to get this reversal here. And there is clock. their player. They're going to use clock. At the logo, it's the senior from Valley Stream, New York, Celeste Taylor. Taylor got contact. That's going to be a foul on Scruggs. Just milking that clock. That's what you got to do with a minute 13 left, up seven. Well, if, if, you're, if you're awake, you have to make a decision when and how soon you're going to foul. If you're going to wait and let the clock wind down, it's only a three-possession game, you know, depending on how you score in the basketball. But you got, you got to make the attempt. Back so now, to, uh, but now, with 15 seconds on the clock, you almost got to play it straight up. Went back to a 20-second shot clock. It's down to 10. Reagan Richardson. Up with the right. Got it with the foul. And that is a backbreaker. And she knows it, too. Really like it. As you said at the beginning of this ball game, we love Reagan Richardson. Her ability to put the ball on the floor. Contact comes a little late. She just plays right through it. Spear kind of made Got that hand nicked in the process. Her wrist. Remember, she had some trouble with her wrist and, and ankle at the end of last season. So hopefully she's going to be okay there. But a good big-time play by Reagan Richards. Yeah, Spear very shaken up, as you can tell. She's not going to the bench, though. But she is in pain. You can tell a lot of discomfort on that left hand. Credit to Reagan Richardson, though. Unbelievable poise from the sophomore from Charlotte. Averaging just over six points a game this season. She's got 11 tonight. Richardson, a transfer from Georgia. Increased her point total last year for the Bulldogs. Like you mentioned, Stan went to the Cannon School out in Charlotte. Great product. She completes a three-point play. It's a 10-point lead. Duke not letting their foot off the gas. And why not? That's not how Coach Lawson coaches. Scruggs lost control. Here's Harrison. 45 seconds. Got to start putting some shots up. Attack. Got to attack. Spear. Scruggs. 30 seconds now ticking down to it. That's out of bounds. It'll stay here with six on the shot clock. They're trying to get a shot. Scrub still trying to fiddle and get comfortable with that wrist. So let's see if they go to her. Sumiel can score off the pop. It's Spear with her injured left hand. That one's way short. Rebound to Oliver. And that should just about do it, folks. Celeste Taylor going to milk it. About a half second difference, game clock and shot clock. What an effort by the Duke Blue Devils. They're going to move on to 14 and 1 on the season. Undefeated in ACC play at 4-0. Here's Kennedy Brown down low, and she walked. Seven and, seven and change to go in this game. And this Wake Forest basketball team is still very young and still working hard, but yet another conference loss, less than 10 points, and continue to have some opportunities. Love the effort by them, especially on the defensive end, but Duke made plays when they had to, and they'll go away with the W. Fitting that the ball ends in the hands of Celeste Taylor. As Duke will walk away with a win, there's Carol Lawson getting her Blue Devils out to the best start to a season they've had since 2013. Meanwhile, Wake Forest dropped to 10-6 on the year, 1-4 in ACC play, and this was their first home loss on the season, by the way. They're 12th in the ACC, now 7-3 in their last 10 games, so they're still on a bit of a hot streak.